Uh, good evening, I'm Abby Howard, and today I will be discussing the negative repercussions of the repopulation of deer species in the lower United States. <laughs> we tend to think of predators as vicious, unstoppable killing machines and the greatest risk to humans nature has to offer, which is partly why we tend to think it's cool and fine to kill them on sight. Because surely they just love the feel of a big human head in their jaws and the taste of our undoubtedly delicious flesh. Not like the kind herbivorous deer who would never hurt anyone. But let's look at how many people have actually died due to large predator attacks in the past 100 years. As you can see, these numbers are not exactly significant. Meanwhile, let's look at the number of people who died in deer-related incidents in the last 100 years. <laughs> Deer average, just under 230 kills per year. In 2014 alone, they killed more people than all large North American predators in an entire century combined. <laughs> the ways in which they do it vary. Of course, when hunters wander into their territory, they tend to cause many a hunting accident. But some deer go after us even more directly, attacking us in our gardens when we least expect it. Of course, the main killer is traffic collisions. Deer are involved in one-sixth of car accidents, a total of one million per year. Of those, over 10,000 result in serious injuries, and over 200 result in death. Of course, due to the inconsistency of reporting deer-related collisions, these numbers are a low projection. Deer may be involved in far more accidents and deaths than we think. But why, you ask? Why are the deer killing us? <laughs> the leading theory among experts is that they're fearless monsters. <laughs> We've seriously depleted the populations of their natural predators. The grizzly bears, for instance, were once over 50,000 strong, but now there are only 1,500 left in the lower 48 states. The decrease in predator populations means that throughout most of the US, deer have no natural predators. Research has shown that this causes a lack of natural fear in the environment, leading to a personality shift in a large percentage of the deer population. This group is more willing to take risks and put themselves in dangerous situations. They've been known to throw themselves through convenience store windows and into lion enclosures. They stand in the middle of busy highways. They even assault and kill the elderly. <laughs> as well as steal cigarettes. This has happened multiple times. It is clear that the lack of predators... This is a very serious matter. Please hold your applause. It is clear that the lack of predators has turned deer into the monsters we now know them to be. Of course, not all deer have gone along with the wave of reckless teenage-style hijinks. But the fearful, cautious deer are not able to coexist with the renegade deer, which has caused a steep decline in the overall deer population within the past four years. The decline could be caused by overhunting, the recent reintroduction of many large predator species, or dwindling resources, but most likely, it is the schism between... <laughs> it is the schism between the deer of the past and the deer of the now. Data shows that the homicidal deer population is growing at an extremely rapid rate, more so than the average deer population ever had. Within two years, the deer will once again be on the rise. But this time, they will all be unstoppable murderers, incapable of doubt or regret, and humanity will be at tremendous risk. Here is the 2014 deer density map for Pennsylvania, the most at-risk state for deer-related deaths. If the deer were to start increasing now, in seven years, we would expect to see a map like this. <laughs> and in another seven, projections suggest it will be utterly carpeted with hyper-aggressive deadly deer and will be inhospitable to human life. The rest of the United States would suffer similarly. <laughs> until the entire continent is overrun. So what are we to do about the beasts? In some areas, groups of deer's natural predators have been reintroduced, but this has proven not to be effective enough. 
the deer are already too far gone, and we must take more drastic measures. Some think merely hunting the deer is a viable option. But this puts humans in the middle of deer territories, which may not have been a problem when we were dealing with the fearful deer of the past. But now it will most certainly result in death. The top homicidal deer experts have compiled a list of more viable solutions to our deer problem. One, create robotic versions of apex predators. <laughs> Much like MIT's own cheetah robot, but add some knives to it. <laughs> Projections suggest that this option would eliminate most of the deer population within five months. Researchers assure having packs of knife-wielding machines whose only purpose is to kill roam in the countryside will not be an issue. <laughs> Number two, of course, the most obvious solution, genetically engineered dromaeosaurid dinosaur eagles, which could wipe out the deer within a few generations. When the, di when the deer have been destroyed, we can store the dino eagles in some sort of theme park, perhaps. <laughs> Number four, more locks. Number five, breed humans with the deer. <laughs> Reintroduce fear into the deer population. <laughs> Number six, genetically engineer the hottest deer possible. All the deer will want to breed with this deer and this deer only, thereby ending the deer once and for all. We believe that through some combination of these solutions, we can end humanity's deer problem before it gets any more out of hand than it already has. Thank you, and please stay safe. <laughs>